Hello and welcome. Order flow or cluster chart is one of the most advanced techniques in technical analysis. It's quite easy to explain what it can offer the trader thanks to the unique Atas future. When you open candlestick chart and start zooming in with the wheel at your mouse, the candles suddenly transform to vast amount of numbers and something looking like a ladder. This zoom in is exactly what order flow is. It's a uh, look inside a candle as if you had a microscope. In addition to the usual information about where the open, high, low, close was, you begin to see the real action inside, how the struggle between buyers and sellers took place and what footprints they left behind. The beginner may find this technique complicated and confusing at first. That's why I have prepared a modal situation that will help you understand the order flow more easily. You will have a big advantage over others who spent months trying to understand footprint logic. We will talk about the fruit market. First of all, we need to explain why some numbers are left and right. Now the fruit market will come in handy. You came to buy 100 kilos of pears because you plan to make cider. A kilo sells for two euro. Anything below that is attractive to buyers, so they walk between the stalls looking for the lowest price. Anything above two euro is attractive to the sellers. If you walk up to a stall with beautiful pears selling for exactly the fair price of two euro, you can do two things. You can offer the seller one euro ninety and wait to see if she agrees to it. Pairs were selling for one euro ninety last week. That was the usual price. Or you tell her to get you one hundred kilo of the same variety and you don't care about the price. You simply need one hundred kilos to make the cider. In the first case, you will get a good deal. But it may happen that she keeps you waiting and you don't buy anything. Other people started to appear on the market for peers. They also decided to make the cider. This has caused an excitement and stir among the sellers. So they started to increase their prices immediately. It's no longer two euro per kilo, but two euro thirty five. Your offer of one euro ninety is therefore uninteresting and you don't have a single peer. In the first case, you have created what is called a limit buy order. You have placed an offer to buy a certain volume at a price below the current price. If you were willing to pay any price, you would have gone home with delicious peers and would have been making cider at that time. You would have managed to buy some peers for two euro some for two euro ten and some for two euro twenty. That wouldn't be bad at all because in the meantime, pears are already selling at the market for a whooping two euro fifty per kilo due to the high demand caused by crowds of people looking for pears. Demand for cider is extremely high today and supply is not sufficient to meet it. Until truckloads of pears from the biggest saddler started arriving late at the market and the price began to fall rapidly. There was an oversupply on the market and suddenly there were more than enough peers. What we take away from the market is neither peers nor cider, but an understanding of the difference between limit and market orders, demand and supply. Limit order is one that waits for the price to come back to it. It gets exactly the price it wants, but risks not being filled. Market order takes it now and doesn't look for a bargain. It gets filled every time, but at the risk of not getting the best price. The ladder at the order flow chart is the same. The right side reflects the desire to buy. Remember, right is buy. We call this side asks. Left is sell and we call them bits. A hint, bid is what a buyer bids for the peers. Ask is what a seller asks for his peers if you care to buy them. And uh, just like at the fruit market, aggression is what moves the price. 
there must be a large group of people interested in peers who see the number of the buyers and how the price is slowly climbing upwards. They think by telling themselves, I will take 100 kilos. I'd rather buy at market price, at any price, than wait and risk going home empty-handed. This aggression drives the price up. Buyers who accept high prices, who want to possess peers, there isn't such a thing then. There were more buyers, so the price went higher. A stock exchange, just like the fruit market, is a place where parties exchange the possessions. For someone to buy, someone else must be willing to sell. It's aggressive buyers who move the price higher and aggressive sellers who move the price lower. Aggressive parties place market orders. They are convinced about the trend and don't want to miss it. They either buy up limits at the ask site to push the price up and join the uptrend, or they sell out limits at the bid site to push the price down and join the downtrend. A footprint is a record of what happened, what quantities were traded at each price level. These are the trades that were made, the trades that were executed. What you see on the footprint is what happened, and the numbers will not change. We have explained the right side. On it are the footprints of buyers willing to buy at any price. Aggressively, as long as they have something to press the cider from. Since every buyer must have a seller, that means that there must be limit sell orders waiting. Those are the peers at the stalls, the price tags at the booths. The stallholders had written the prices at which they were going to sell the peers to the aggressive buyers. The left side is either our waiting guy, who came with an offer to buy at 1 euro 90, placed the limit buy order and waited until the afternoon. Hello, I will buy 100 kilos of peers, but I will give 1 euro 90. I'm okay if I have to wait. As soon as the orchardist arrived with his trucks, the stallholders started to get rid of the goods as quickly as possible, because it was evident to them that the price would go down. So they ran up to our waiting man and gladly sold him the peers for 1 euro 90. Our waiter had a limit buy order. The stallholders were panicky and aggressive in getting rid of the peers, willing to sell for anything so that they, in turn, would not have to return home with unsold fruits. The stallholders were selling at market sell to those who were waiting for the price to drop down, to anyone who was willing to buy for a price. And now you understand the mechanism behind the footprint. All these numbers are records of the trades. Aggressive buyers on the right side, aggressive sellers on the left side. However, you'd better always have in mind that there must be two parties to close a deal. If unusually high numbers suddenly start appearing on the right side of the footprint, which represents purchases at the highest prices of the day, it means that the planter's trucks have arrived. These are limit sales. The wholesale grower saw that the price had gotten up to €2.50 because of the high demand. So without setting up a stand, he started selling straight from the truck. Huge crowds of buyers flocked to him, who just watched the price go up, but still had no peers. So they started buying in bulk. 100 kilos, 50 kilos, 200 kilos, that went fast. This began to satisfy the demand. The buyers began to calm down. Nobody came to the orchard as to say, hey, I will give you 2 euro 60, but just sell me some pears. All of a the sudden, there was enough supply. On the contrary, the orchardist saw that the buyers started hesitating. So he lowered the price to 2 euro 40. And again, he sold a large quantity of cargo. And then he lowered the price again to €2.30. On the sales records, the highest numbers would be at the €2.50, €2.40, and maybe €2.30 levels. But they will be on the right-hand side, because the picker and his trucks were calmly rewriting the price on the sign. 
It was aggressive buyers who accepted his price, which is why we find the highest numbers of the day on the right side of the footprint, not the left. Therefore, the footprint must be seen in a certain context. Certainly, if the market is in full swing, we don't know if the crazy people from the next village have arrived and suddenly jumped in at the very peak of the prices to buy peers because there were none left in the market in their village. They would have been behind the high numbers on the right. But if the market has closed, there are high numbers on the right side of the record book and the last peer sold today for 1 euro 80, that doesn't mean growth. That means demand is being satiated or saturated. Although we see high numbers on the right, we can expect that tomorrow the saddler will come again and will in turn try to sell what is left on his trucks. The buyers were already pressing cider at home, even our cautious buyer, who waited all day yesterday with a sign above his head saying, I buy 100 kilos of pears, I'm offering 1 euro 90. The price is not going to go up today, it will probably go down. And that is the greatest charm of the footprints, but also its danger. You have to be able to decode whether the high numbers on the right are aggressive buyers or a truck with a huge quantity of peers that has just arrived. So, let's recap. Right side is asks, aggressive buyers or passive waiting sellers. Left side is bids, aggressive sellers or passive waiting buyers. That's why we read the price diagonally. The left side represents the desire to push the price down, while the right side shows the aggression when the intention is to move the price up. At Atas, we strive to ensure that our videos are not just informative, but also enjoyable. We hope you found this video engaging. If you did, please show your support with a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to stay updated with our upcoming content. And thank you for watching.